Hello everyone, this is Iran Talk and in this video I'd like to take a look at the genetic origins of the Argeid dynasty based on the recent samples we have from one of the tombs at the Virginia Burial Complex in Macedonia. The Virginia Burial Complex is located in Greek Macedonia and not in the country known as North Macedonia. On the matter of the remains, it was believed for a very long time that they belonged to Philip II and his wife. However, the researchers proved that this is not the case and that the remains date to older periods. So these even precede the rise of Philip II and later his son Alexander the Great. While the remains of Alexander the Great and his father Philip II have not been found, the remains analyzed were from nobility belonging to the Macedonian Argeid dynasty and could, for this reason, be very similar to Alexander's genetic makeup. Though I must emphasize that this is just speculative as we don't have Alexander the Great's remains. The study in question was titled New Scientific Evidence for the History and Occupants of Tomb 1 in the Great Tumulus at Virginia. In terms of the key takeaways, you can see that the male that was buried was aged 25 to 35 and he lived around the first half of the 4th century BCE. The female was aged 18 to 25 and she also lived during this time period. There were infant bones that were found in the tomb dating to the Roman period and finally you can see that these individuals were buried decades before Philip II's death who was the father of Alexander the Great. In terms of the abstract, only four of the bones belonged to a female and the remainder belonged to a male and the male was aged between 25 and 35 years old which is very interesting and this was done using radiocarbon dating and specific dates for this individual are between 400 and 367 BCE and once utilizing further analysis known as potential collagen offset correction. This is slightly shifted to 388 to 356 BC which is very interesting and the female bones date to the same period and also because of these dates it was concluded that this is not the tomb of Philip II and his wife Cleopatra as well as their newborn child and this is also very interesting. The authors also stated that special precautions were taken to ensure that the samples were not contaminated and this will be important for later but nonetheless this shows that there was an effort on the part of the geneticists to ensure that the samples were not contaminated by their own DNA. Despite this, the geneticists responsible for the study do acknowledge later on that there was indeed contamination. This aspect must be considered to better understand the haplogroup as well as the autosomal results that I will present. On the matter of the paternal haplogroup results, Natufian Farmer on X posted that the majority were RL151 and this is a Western European clad and only one was EV22 and this is more of a Greek and Albanian clad and what's interesting here is that the majority of the samples actually belong to haplogroup R1b and this shows that the ancient elites of the Macedonian kingdom were primarily of European descent in their paternal line though nonetheless again because these samples unfortunately may be contaminated these results should be considered with the contamination results in mind nonetheless they're still very interesting and they point to a European origin for the ancestors of the Argeid dynasty. Now to get into the autosomal analysis here are the distances for the Argeid male sample and you can see the northwestern European samples from the ancient period are the closest to it including a laid Iron Age outlier sample from England as well as samples from France, from Sweden and other western European countries and if this is not contaminated it suggests that the Argeid male as well as his ancestors were primarily of western European and northwestern European descent though again this is is very dubious considering the contamination. In terms of the female you can see that the closest population to it are the Bronze and Iron Age Balkan samples including the Greek Late Bronze Age Migdalia sample from Achaea as well as the two samples with high step from Crete and this is very interesting and this shows that in comparison to the male these results seem to be much more legitimate. The closest modern populations to the Argeid male sample are from France and then there are also samples from Northwestern Europe including Belgian and Flemish samples with Anglo-Canadian and Anglo-American samples as well and this is very interesting. 
Again, what this hints at is a northwestern European profile for the argued male member, though nonetheless, again, these results are dubious. And I say this because the argued male sample is likely heavily contaminated. In terms of the female sample, you can see that the closest populations to it are Albanians, Italians, and Greeks. What this hints at is the fact that the Argate males took local wives as their spouses and this is very interesting and I think this was done to strengthen ties with neighboring kingdoms. Moving on, here are the source populations I will be utilizing to autosomally assess the ancestry of these two Argate samples. These are primarily Neolithic populations though there are a couple from other periods as well such as the Bronze Age. Here are the results for the Argeid male sample and you can see that it's on average 46% Anatolian farmer from Barsin, 41.4% steppe Yamnaya from Samara dating to the early Bronze Age and 12.6% western hunter-gatherer. What's interesting here is that this sample has a very western, particularly northwestern European genetic profile, though it is worth mentioning that the distances are fairly high and this is primarily due to the poor quality of the sample and also because of the likely contamination of this sample. It's very typical for contemporary northwestern Europeans and this is likely not the case with the ancient Macedonian elites and they probably did not have this profile, though nonetheless there is a possibility that it could be true. We just need more samples to be sure of it. Now here are the results for the Argeid female sample and you can see that it's on average 67.4% Anatolian farmer from Barsin from the late Neolithic, 26.4% Yamnayan from Samara from the early Bronze Age, 5% Caucasian hunter-gatherer from Cotius in Georgia and finally 1.2% East Asian which is being best proxied here by a Siberian source. With these results, you can see again primarily a local Balkan profile and not a northern or northwestern European profile as was the case with the male Argeid sample. Before I conclude, I just wanted to present an image of Philip II of Macedon and many images of his son Alexander the Great. Here is a bust of Philip II and you can see an image reflecting a very European phenotype. Moving on, here is a Roman copy of a bust of Alexander the Great which dated to his lifetime and you can again see a very European phenotype with this bust. A point that is worth emphasizing is that there were many busts commissioned after the death of Alexander the Great and here is one of them and again you can see a very European phenotype, particularly a Central and Western European phenotype and here is yet another bust and this has more of a Balkan-like phenotype which is very interesting and then here is another and again you can see a very Balkan and Central European phenotyping and these three busts despite being commissioned after the lifetime of Alexander the Great are nonetheless fairly accurate in terms of depicting his facial features. Here is one of two known mosaics of Alexander the Great from Pella dating to his lifetime and Alexander is the figure on the right there and you can again see a very European phenotype particularly a northern, northwestern and western European phenotype more so than a Balkan phenotype. What this means is that while the sample from the Argeid burial could indeed have been contaminated, it is entirely possible that it reflects the true profile of the Argeid male elites, though nonetheless this is very unlikely since they took local wives and likely did not originate directly from the ancient Central European cultures associated with the Yamnaya people. Here is another mosaic of Alexander the Great and he is depicted to the left here hunting a lion and again you can see a very strong European phenotype particularly a central, a northern and a northwestern European phenotype and this is very interesting. And this just goes to show that the Macedonian elite could indeed have been very similar to the contaminated sample though again this is unlikely it's in the realm of plausibility. Finally, here is a statue of Alexander the Great and you can see that the northern element is strong in him and while he may not have had as much step as the sample featured in this analysis, nonetheless it could have been a significant component and likely was a significant component in his genome.
To conclude, in this analysis, I took a look at the genetic origins of the Argyad dynasty based on two recent samples that were sequenced and converted to the Global 25, and what was discovered was that one of them was primarily of Northwestern European descent and had heavy Yamnayan ancestry, whereas the other was more of a local ancestry. Though again, you have to consider contamination to be an issue in both of these samples, though most notably in the male sample. Despite the contamination issue, there's still a question of Alexander's phenotype as most depictions dating to his lifetime and afterwards depict an individual who is primarily of European descent, particularly Western European or even Northern European descent, though again, this is based on my personal analysis. That is it for this video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.